G'day rugby players, welcome to the X-Physio channel. Are you someone that wants to get better at rugby? Maybe you want to be able to shrug tackles, you want to be more dominant over the ball, you might want to be better in scrums and rucks and mauls. Well, it's really important for you to do those things that you do have a good level or a base level of core strength that will allow you to apply and resist forces on the rugby field. In this video, I'm going to show you some really high level difficult rugby core exercises that you can start to implement into your rugby routine. Now I've already done one other video on rugby core that's a little bit more lower level building up to some harder core exercises so feel free to check that one out as well. So guys if at any point in time you do enjoy the video please consider liking and subscribing to the channel so that we can grow together and I'm able to put out more rugby content for you to consume and enjoy. Otherwise guys, we're gonna get into some hard, high level core exercises for a rugby player now. This is a side plank which we use to strengthen the lateral sling. To strengthen the lateral sling to help prevent injuries around the groin and around our knees and ankles. A nice progression from a side plank is a star plank. Now these are really hard. If you can get up to sets of 12 reps, you're doing really well. Most side planks and planks in general, you start off at 15, build to 30 seconds, up to a minute. Doing something for your lateral sling twice a week. An anterior sling, which is the basic body weight plank, can be done on our knees if it's a little bit too difficult for you, and then we can go up onto our feet. It's a classic, it definitely has its part in the game. Just try to make sure you're not just collapsing through your back. Make sure you're holding through your lower abdomen as you do this exercise. Anyways, I prefer a hollow hold over a plank. Make sure you keep your shoulders and your hips above the ground. Don't arch in your lower back. Once again, increase in 15 second increments. Great anterior sling variation. Use it to work on that stability, that anti-rotation stability as you pull the weight across. Or we can go for a classic pull-off press using a band. Try to keep that band in the midline, pushing out in front of the body. Anti-rotation is really important to resist forces in rugby. If you're getting tackled, if you're getting cleaned out, exercises will help you to resist movement. I would make sure you're rotating an anti-rotation movement at least once to twice a week in your strength work. Sets of 6 to 12 repetitions per exercise for these two is a great rep range. The landmine rotation is a great rotation and it's also an anti-rotation exercise. Take your time to lower the weight to the ground and then rotate it up around to the other side. I was probably going a little bit too quick here. Really take your time to lower that weight down to the side. I definitely could have taken my time more with this to really focus on slowing that weight down to get that anti-rotation effect. Anywhere from 6 to 10 reps for this exercise, a couple of sets. It can almost be an actual exercise in your workout as opposed to like a core finisher at the end. Great for the shoulders and rotator cuffs as well. Banded rotation is more of a power core exercise. We're trying to move really quickly. So this is when you're tackling someone and you're trying to enforce your will onto someone on the field quickly. You're trying to be powerful. It's developing that rotational strength that you require when you're tackling and bringing people to the ground or if you're trying to shrug away from someone. Now this is debatable as to whether this is a core exercise, but a lot of male rugby players especially will suffer from groin pain. And this adductor plank is a great way to get some adductor load or some groin uh, strengthening into your routine. I always found it gave me a bit of a core workout as well. If being long lever where your foot is on the bench is too much, go to knee on the bench to make it easier. Once again, start off with 10 seconds, 20, 30 seconds, up to a minute if you can, but I would say 30 to 40 seconds is good. Similarly, a lot of rugby players will get hamstring strains. I find this hamstring bridge to be a great way to get some load into the hamstring isometrically, which is a really important part of the hamstring's function, is to work isometrically, meaning you're holding yourself in place. You can bridge up with one leg or two legs to make it harder. You can add weight to make it harder again. We just want to work on 30 second holds, progressing up to a minute. A couple of sets is a great way to work on holding those hips high for the trunk and core work, but you're also getting a great hamstring burner as well towards the end of a session. If you're doing a double leg hold, 30 seconds to 40 seconds would be ideal, and a single leg more like 15 to 20 seconds per hold maybe two to three sets depending on where this occurs in your workout and how much hamstring stuff you've done prior to doing these. 
You can do eccentrics where you lower slowly each rep as well. We have to use our lumbar spines a lot and we get a lot of load through things like scrums. I do believe that as rugby players, we should be trying to strengthen our lumbar spines, strengthen our back extensors to be able to cope with the loads of rugby. Now in some programs, they don't do things like deadlifts because they're already doing too many other compounds, but adding in some simple back extensions towards the end of a program is definitely safe and effective to do. Just keep the reps light until you build up a tolerance. You can do it with a straight back or do the hinge variation which I'm doing here where I really flex my abdomen and work on getting the glutes and less of the back. It really depends on what you're after. So here's a snippet from my other core video that I have on YouTube. A bear crawl and a bear crawl arm reach and leg lift are a great way to start to strengthen yourself in that hinge position that we need to be in when we're scrumming, when we're rucking, trying to get good body height. Coaches always bang on her about good body height, so why don't we practice it as a core exercise? I like the bear crawl position because it's nice and low, it's quite difficult, and we can add in obstacles to make it harder. 20 seconds, building up to 30 seconds per variation is ideal. Looking for an anterior sling challenge, the barbell rollout is definitely one of those. Make sure that you keep yourself tight through your lower abdomen and you're not just arching through your lumbar spine. As you can see, I do lose my form towards the end of the motion and the bar shoots forward. Really work on taking your time and getting it right. This one may not be for everyone. If you struggle, you can use bands to assist you. Just use it by attaching it to a rack. Five to eight reps is a good rep range for this exercise, especially if you're just starting out. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you've learned something, please like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more, and it just helps me grow as a channel as well. Thanks guys, I'll see you in another video.